Welcome, everybody, to another Kicking Tables. Today, we are delighted to welcome the voice of Richard Burridge, the creator of Tales of Conflict on Kickstarter now. Richard, welcome to the show. No, thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure. So, Richard, uh, Tales of Conflict, it is the age-old story. What is better, cats or dogs? Tell us about... I don't know why it's a game. I'm Obviously, cats are the best. So, I mean, it's just no. game over. Right. No, <laughs> That's... dogs are clearly man, and the better pet is clearly the dog. Well, Richard, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us? Oh, well, I, I couldn't possibly say. I'll just let you two discuss for Troy. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, T Tico doesn't need to say anything. But what we do want to know is, we want you to tell us what is Tales of Conflict. Give us a brief overview of, of your new game. Fantastic, thank you. So, as you mentioned, it is answering the classic old question, which is the better house pet, um, cats or dogs? But what we don't realize as humans is when we're not around, um, if we're out for the day, our cats and dogs actually sneak out, they put on armor and battle gear, they then fight each other in like a kind of martial arts style. It's non-lethal, need to point that out, um, <laughs> but it's... It's the sort of like scrapping to try and prove which one is superior for like um, honor, prestige, territories. And yeah, trying to answer that age old question. But you do have mixed teams because you can pick over just a team of cats or a team of dogs. You can have a mixed team, which are sell swords, who sell their services to the highest bid of biscuits and squeaky toys. Okay. So you can mix. If you like both cats and dogs, you can mix the two up. So that's kind of the law behind it. The actual game mechanics is it's mainly a deck building card game with dice for combat. And oh. you start with a team of three champions where you you start with a deck of 10 cards, which is mostly, mostly money. You've then got to buy stuff from your armory to equip your champions. So it could be weapons, armor, skills, which gives you like re-rows. It could be events that give you an edge for a turn and that sort of thing and your opponent is also trying to do the same and you've got different classes of combat so you've got the knights which is mostly um armor shields ranged weapons you've got the barbarians which is the more aggressive so they've got axes and spiked armor mm. and a lot of event cards that they can attack more the assassins which are more sneaky so they've got a lot of weak but ranged weapons, poisons, and they've got abilities to hit the champions around the flank and the back. And finally, you've got the thieves, which everyone knows a pet like this. They're able to get their paws on anything oh, yes. somehow, and we're not sure how. Yeah. Um, and they literally, they're probably the hardest class to play as because they have basic weapons, but that's because they nick all the good stuff from the <laughs> other players. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Where well, you've got like a thief with like, oh, he's got a little knife. Oh, what's this giant great axe? I'll buy that off you. And then this this thief with a knife and a massive great axe trying to run around is um, I, oh, yeah. it's, it's funny. I feel like cats would definitely be uh, good assassins. You know, very sneaky. You know, it's like where'd the cat go? I don't know. And he's just like he's in this tiny little hole somewhere, just waiting. You know, but <laughs> um, have eyes coming out of the dark. <laughs> so. It's a deck builder, but it actually feels like a deck builder meets Munchkin. You know, it's because it's got that you've got the armors and you can you can add things to your character. What was the inspiration behind this Tales of Conflict? And so it, it, honestly, it is kind of a a mix of different games and different things. Because I'm quite a hardcore gamer myself, mm. got loads of different types. So I've probably taken ideas from different games subconsciously. Um, but it's definitely like a, I do D and D as well, but yeah, as you said, a Munchkin sort of inspired where you can equip and yeah. upgrade. And it was the idea of being able to upgrade your champions to get better and better. And it's a bit of an arms race, okay. um, to do, yeah, that sort of thing. And the fun thing is with mechanics, if you pick cards on, if you want to replace the stuff, you've got to burn it out of the game. You can't just switch and swap. So each champion's builds like a, a character based on how you equip them as well so you you end up with champions that are purely close combat others that are more ranged and you kind of develop a story as you play the game okay that's cool that's very okay. cool 
Yeah. So tell us how dice rolling comes into play with this, because we've we've all played you know deck builders where mm-hmm. you're you're sort of building up your deck and your character. But how how does how do the die actually how does how is that implemented? Ah, right, yeah. So most of the equipment. So your champion will start with three dice. Um, one dice in attack, one in defense, one in speed. And then most of the equipment cards give you more dice to row. So a sword will give you an extra red dice in combat. Um, a shield will give you an extra green dice, um, which is defensive dice. And the main idea was to add a bit of a random element to it. And also, if you've ever tried to tell a dog to fetch or sit and it misbehaves or try to tell a cat to do anything... Oh, um, it, it represents these are house pets, so the dice kind of represent that random element where they might either fight really well or they might just have a nap. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> so how it's so that's what it represents. How it's implemented is um, so your champion has a set of dice on the cards, and then any equipment you apply will have dice symbols, and it's literally just right. I'm attacking you. How many red dice do I see in front of me? Okay, I see four red dice. Say, um, pick up that many. Throw. If it's a four, five, or six, it's a hit. A one, two, three, it's a miss. So it's really quick. Just pick up, throw, um, okay. and you can see the results very quickly. But it's mainly implemented through like everything gives you dice. Um, so at the beginning, you're just throwing one or two dice. But by the end, like a barbarian who's all about their attacks, I've seen them have six or seven dice on the attack on its own, right? Which is terrifying to see that just all these guys <laughs> going across the field but yeah it just gives up a of random element to it um being their animals and that and yeah it's implemented like that how it's printed on the cards each thing like a single axe gives you one dice a big axe gives you three attack dice and so forth and what are you ultimately uh trying to achieve uh you're trying to eliminate the int- the other player completely what is the what is the end goal for each player the end goal is to capture all three of the champions, oh. and if they capture all three, they then win the day and get the glory and get to sunbathe in the best spot and that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, the other three get pit in a little prison, um, law-wise, they're taken out of the game, pit in a little prison, and they get to just practice and that until they get to go home. Because this is all based on while you're out of work. Right. So you can imagine they then sneak out, battle, and then they come <laughs> they home at come the end home. of the day. It's like Toy, yeah, Sto- Toy I... Story for, for cats and dogs. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so if your dog or cat seem a bit down when they've been out all day, it's probably because they got beaten by the other team and <laughs> captured. Yeah. Um, that's understandable. Yeah, I mean, but... dogs will always get beaten by cats. So, I mean, I think that's just... Uh, I think that's really what the game is trying to say here. <laughs> I, I couldn't Never. possibly comment, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the different classes. Um, is there different strategies as to which classes you want to have, like that work well together? That you you want to sort of when you're when you're drafting your 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 starting your starting pets. Um, which which classes work well together? What are the strategies behind that? Ah, uh, well, there's there's different mechanics. So the core mechanics for one on one is you just pick a class. And they come with a deck of thirty cards. Okay. That's okay. your armory. So the deck building in the standard one on one game is you start with 10 cards of money. You've then got a buy from the armory, which is your main like weapons and armor. That then goes into your discards. And then when your deck runs out, you then suffer your discards to your main deck. And then that becomes your new hand. And that's where the deck building in that regards comes in. Right. So it isn't combined in classes as such. Each class has its own deck. You've then got to build your deck from the armory. But there is in the rule book, different variants of play. So there is a variant of play which is inspired by um, Star Realms, where oh, you nice. have where you have you to get all the class armories, suffer them all together, pair them as a pile in the middle, oh. and then deal out five cards. And then you've got teams and you can have up to four players doing this. Buy them for one memory. Um and yeah, and then you've got the mixed classes there. So there's different drafting games you can play within this one game of Terms of Conflict, depending on what your style of play is. And you can even, there's a hardcore mode where a lot of items, the advanced ones, have critical effects. So if you roll a six, it hits and does something better, like other, that's you reroll dice, or your opponent, you make your opponent reroll defense dice, stuff like that. Um, a hardcore mode is you can only use the crit effect 
if your champion matches the same color as the card you've brought. So, mm -hmm. like, a Barbarian is the only one who can use a Great Axe to its best, while an Assassin would be better than the Shurikens and the Poisons. So there's different elements and different variants of play. So you can literally just play whatever sort of game, drafting game you want within the right. Tales of Conflict game. Okay, that's that's really very cool. I, I'm I'm loving what you're describing here. This is, I I love these kind of games. I mean, I'm a I'm a cat lover myself. Obviously, Tico loves those other animals. Um, but he's now allowed to have the wrong opinion. That's he, everyone <laughs> is entitled to their own wrong opinion. That's absolutely correct. Um, now, speaking of pets, you actually held a contest earlier in the year to allow. Uh, fans to have their pets turned into characters in this game how many of the characters in game actually started out as a real pet um i would say except i think three of them about wow. 20 odd of them pretty much all the pets you see are pets that are owned by friends and family and they got to put all the input in so they got to tell me what they wore what their pose their eye cover um <laughs> nice. their facial expression yeah like like one person wanted them to have like blood red eyes like th they pick contact lenses and apparently to try and terrify the cats <laughs> so dog with blood red eyes um to try and scare the cats um but and also they tell me little stories about their pets that we get into the art style so yeah most of them are owned pets so a lot of my friends really want this game to get funded because then their <laughs> pet will be famous that's right but it's it's little stories like um one of my favorite is um a cat called abba who is a thief and she's obsessed with ham absolutely obsessed with eating ham <laughs> so her character has gotten this knife out and another hand a ham sandwich nice and she's eating the ham sandwich and then on her belt, she's got more knives, which, <laughs> rumour has it, they're for different types of bread. So, depending on what she's eaten... Um, she's ready to go. Other, yeah, and in the other pocket, she's got another sandwich ready-made. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow. yeah, um, and what's good is there is pledge levels in this game where you can get your pet done as a champion, and it will be included in your copy of the game. Oh, nice. Very nice. So That's great, yeah. So people will be able to... There's two levels. You've got a digital champion where it's done... Um, it'll get done by the artist. It'll then get sent to you digitally online where you can post it on your social media. You can post... You can, um, some of my friends are putting on T-shirts and that. They're their champion and a quote. Some have got T-shirts or mugs. Um, and then you've got nice. the uh, top tier which is where they get done by the artist, get printed on a card and included in your copy of the game, and will be included in the game book under the Hall of Heroes. So oh, people will have right. their pets in a Hall of Heroes where they can see other pets that were back in the game. That's nice. Now, is the character name the actual pet's name? Yes, all the, the pet's names are the what the pet, the owners called them. Very so, nice. I mean, one of the cats we got, who's going to be a legendary champion because it belonged to a YouTuber, um, he's one of them is literally called Tiny Cat. So that's, so that's what's on the card. It's called Tiny Ti Cat. Tiny Cat. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Now, um, I have, do have to ask, though, what is your favorite character? And uh, are, your, are your pets in the game? Um, yes, I was going to say, um, my cat is called Cindy. He's an archer with a crossbow. And if you're wondering, hang on, Cindy, he, yes, when he was a kitten, we thought he was a girl. Turned out, no, he, he was a boy, um, but I insisted on not changing the name because I was an awkward child. That's so fair. we had a cat. So you've got a male cat called Cindy, but that was my cat growing up. So um, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate from all my friends because I could have named their pets. You know what? It's no different, was... no different than a man named Jane from Serenity, so... We're this all, is very true. Yeah. We're all good. When we're you all wear good a hat there. Like that, That's right. You no, know he's not afraid of anyone. There you go. <laughs> um, now, Tales of Conflict is actually a new name for this game, and this is a relaunch. Uh, tell us a little bit about what happened in January. You you originally launched the game under a different name, and uh, what's changed since then? Um, yeah, so it's it's it, it hurts a bit talking about this, but um, yeah, it was originally called Kittens versus Puppies. I know, really inventive name. Um, <laughs> pretty much, it says uh, what it um, is, right? Exactly. Yeah, but it's not very marketing and catchy. But yeah, so 
I launched the game originally in February, but I, I hands up, I really, as a lot of people do on Kickstarter, really underestimated the marketing side of things. So the game itself uh, is pretty much the same game. However, it's more what I'm redoing is the marketing. So in the first one, I did a vid- little video myself with a camera and basic mic, things like that. This time, I've got an animator to animate mm. a, a trailer where you've got cats and dogs flying through the air and sound effects and music. Um, so it's mainly the main thing that's changed is marketing and adding, paying people that could do a better job than me <laughs> to yeah. get the best out of it. Um because, yeah, I mean, coming up with rules and games and mechanics, no problem. But trying to animate things and get the right music and add sound effects and spread the word as well, okay. um, that was, yeah, that's probably the key difference and something that I had learned the hard way. Kickstarter, you need a crowd. It's crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. But um, I had a lot of love and support from the people that did back the game. And they recommended ideas for how to improve on it, you know, ways of getting a better. I mean, the Kickstarter community has been absolutely fantastic. And Tales of Conflict was voted by the previous backers from the first one. Okay. So I did a vote. I said, here's like four names me and my friends have come up with. Which one do you prefer? And Tales of Conflict. um, It's a great name. Came flying and flying. Yeah, absolutely. Second place was Raining Cats and Dogs. (laughs) As in, <laughs> rain spell, as in like king, queen, reigning over oh, a country sort of thing. So yes. that was that was a close second. But yeah, people went, nah, Tales of Conflict. It's quick, catchy, yep. um, a fun pun. And yeah, so it, that's mainly the difference between the first and the second one is marketing and getting people that know how to do things better than me to do that sort of thing, like the advertisement, the animation, the trailers, that sort of thing. That's awesome. That's good. Yeah. So you're you're, just, you're more prepared this time, really, and that's uh, that's that's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. No, it was a learning experience. That's how I saw it. It wasn't a failure. It was mm-hmm. a learning experience. Yeah, for sure. So I learned so much from it, and I really appreciate the support. If anyone from the old Kickstarter hears this, I really appreciate like all the feedback and the positives. I like, the the last few days, I was getting messages like, "Look, you're not going to get funded. Don't worry about it. We'll support you for the next one." do you know do this and this and this and yeah it's that sort of yeah it's just the atmosphere and the crowd you get in kickstarter is really positive and supportive i find yeah it, yeah. it really is so so what's next after the this kickstarter successful are we going to see like parrots versus hamsters uh, any sort of expansion plans anything like that with with other pets out there Oh, well, well, there are plans for this campaign as stretch goes nice okay. um if it goes on adding rodents to the game so okay. mice rats rabbits ferrets anything you can imagine as long as it's got four legs right um so we can do arms and legs we're looking you could add rodents and the other stretch go if we can would be reptiles so geckos bearded oh. dragons frogs and that sort of thing no snakes though people keep saying snakes it's like how would they hold the weapons it's it's a, yeah you, you have a whole slew of of weapons that you just can't do anything with it's just like <laughs> but yeah so we've got stretch goes for that well snakes could uh, could you could uh, sort of say maybe they have poison darts or something they just whoosh, through their mouth you know <laughs> who knows <laughs> um, I, I, I've tried to explain this. I mean, people are like, oh, rats and mice, that's brilliant. What about snakes? <laughs> <laughs> that was a leap, but okay. Um, but yeah, that's, and if this does get funded and it does do really well and it is a thing that people want catching dogs back, then I'm sure we could think of all sorts of different classes that we could add to it. Mm, yeah. Um, like if we wanted to go really fancy, we could maybe do mages or clerics Ooh. or. Nice. How uh, about a steampunk themed where cats and dogs have like top hatch monocles and steampunk armor? Um, <laughs> oh man, there's so much you could do with it. I'm all f- I'm all for the mages too. You're throwing fireballs and stuff. Oh okay. yeah, I'm just in. Based on the elements, sort of thing. You know, their spells could be based on the different elements and. Yep. Yep. So yeah, the possibilities are quite endless, really. But that is, that is amazing. Now uh, that is, it's on Kickstarter now. Uh, is it going to be on for the whole month of September? When does when does your campaign end? 
it ends on the 27th, I believe. I want to say that. I'm just going to double check that. It yeah. ends on the Sunday. Okay. Um, so, uh, so it's a four four week campaign. Uh, get in there, back it, uh, Richard. What's the plans after the campaign? If somebody misses the campaign, can they? Will they eventually be able to go to their game store and buy one? Can they order one from you online? What's the plans there post campaign? Plans from there. So what I'm going to do? Um, it's about 27 day campaign, and then I'm going to have it on back a kit for 30 days. Okay. So okay. people will be able to. If it gets funded, it pretty much would double the them for time. People can get a copy um, at the Kickstarter rate and everything, so that can just be added on because we're going to have need some buffer time between funded and delivering right. to the people that have paid for their champions to be in the game. Right. So we're going to have to get the artist right. to draw that. So there will be 30 days of back kit. Um, I will be using that time as well to reach out to retailers Excellent. and try and get it into gaming stores, things like that, try and get some interest there. So hopefully it will be, even if they don't get on Kickstarter or back a kit, it will appear on shop shelves um, as soon as possible, really. That's fantastic. That is awesome. That's great. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. I, uh, the game sounds great. It's great humor and it is that age old conflict yeah, everybody likes to fight over who cats or dogs which is the better pet i mean obviously the answer is cats and we won't hear from obviously, tico on yeah. that matter no but uh just dogs. Tico, richard <laughs> richard thank you so much for joining us and uh we wish you all the best on your campaign thank you so much you guys take care Hidden from human eyes, a great conflict is underway. Cats and dogs around the world take part in non-lethal battles to prove who is the superior house pet, fighting for territory, honor, and prestige. This is Tales of Conflict.